it's Steve and today we're going to talk a little bit more about the ATN Excite scope, a night scope. This is the 3x14 um, the newer version. Alright, I'm going to start off though with the battery pack. Bought the battery pack because as everybody knows it burns through batteries fast. Um, I have some alkalines in it and talking an hour and a half, two hours tops. So I bought a battery pack. Um, no instructions at all, which is you know, not good for the company, but it's a battery, but it's a smart battery, smarter than me. But I figure out how to charge it, you know, USB, plug it in. Uh, about 20 hours later, it's still charging. I only had two of the four little light white lights as you can see the little white lights there if it's showing up anyway I'm like damn what's going on here I got a bad battery um so while kind of worrying about it I came up with an idea plugged it in and just let it run one night all night long ran about nine ten hours finally goes dead so that's what I was going to attempt to do discharge the battery now when I first plugged the charger, you know, put the battery in a charger, I was using a regular USB hub. So maybe it's not that fast of a charger. I would think it'd be at least a one amp. And it says that um, this battery pack should charge in about 15 hours under a one amp and about 10 hours on a two amp. But I did, when I, after I drained it, I grabbed one of my little GoPro charger things here which is a 2 amp plugged it in directly and I'd say it was charging about 10 hours at that point all four lights no problems okay so we are gonna be seeing how the battery holds up I was using it the other night but I only used it for three or four hours had no trouble with it charge wise okay also with the battery of course, you know, comes the battery holder, which you see I have here attached to my Smith & Wesson 22. Now, there's been some concern about standard AR-15s and the thing because of the charging handle that comes back so far. Of course, on a 1022, it only comes back about two inches, not a big deal for me, okay. Um, now, here are some of the concerns. We do a lot of spotlighting for rabbits, and when it's not so hot outside, we go out and walk around in the desert. Now, I'm basically using this two plus pound scope. And by the way, I did put a little riser on it, a little quick release. You can see there, because um, I got it, I'm going to set it up for four different rifles. Anyway, two plus pounds, kind of heavy, makes, makes a rifle heavy. Um, for those of you who are not, um, know what spotlighting or even just rabbit hunting here in, in Nevada it's not set in weight you go out you find them and you chase them down they very suddenly will sit still for you once in a while but usually you gotta you're constantly moving it's a quick moving little fast target and that extra weight drags that rifle around a lot um, but that's okay I'm kinda not really using a scope for properly you know because it's not with the focusing, all this, it's not that easy to do with the type of hunting that we do mostly here. I will be getting it out and doing some other things with the, the infrared um, attachment that will go on it. I actually got the more powerful infrared on order. It should be here in about a week, maybe less. All in all, I do like the package. Uh, I did get the, had the focusing turret. Um, I did replace my first copy. You can see it in an earlier video. This one came out of my um, unboxing video. I found a little link with um, some forum that the cap here has, I mean, you gotta take it off um, if you're comfortable with doing some hardware work. There's three little set screws, scrub screws, kind of wiggled off. The powder coating on the inside is a little thick in places. Clean it out. It did help a lot. Tony, turning, though still a little stiff, nowhere near as bad as it was. Uh, highly doable now. Okay, so I do like to put it on this rifle here. I'm gonna 
but I'm going to release first when I prick the catch. And that's why I like the quick detach. Okay, now, I was having a little issue. Now, of course, um, when you're using the extra battery pack, you gotta take the cover off here, use the little rubber piece that they supply to help seal it in, and you just pop it in. Work your way into that USB connector. All right, so the battery, then, you plug it into one of the larger, normal size USB ports. There's two of them there. Um, depending on what direction you want the cable to come out. Let's try three. The pack pouch. I'm trying to get this up so you can see it a little bit better. The pouch is a little bit of a tight fit. Slip it in. just mainly around the corners. But I can see, pretty easy. Then they supply some little Velcro stuff, so I kind of Velcro the cable here out of the way. So it doesn't get snagged on nothing. And it worked for the, really good for the most part, but like I said, it gets pretty heavy at this point, even with uh, Smith & Wesson 22, which is pretty much all plastic. Of course, I do have the flashlight up front here. That, um, turn my flashlight on and off. Have a little laser. Um, Side it in real easy. Now, here's a problem I was having. Uh, again, for those who, of you who don't know about spotlighting, basically you're driving around with spotlights and looking for rabbits. Now. There's a number of counties here in Nevada where it is legal. Um, so we go out there and do it. It's quite fun, but you gotta be in a hurry. Okay, so when I'm ready to shoot, and it's my turn to be a shooter, I get the scope turned on and put in idle mode. So, because everything's dark, um, again, if you're using spotlights, you're out at night, pretty much just keep my finger right on the record button. And wait. Okay, when somebody says rabbit, I hit the record button. Open the car door. Hopefully by then the car is stopped. Get out there, arm it. Um, once I'm out of the car, you cannot have a loaded gun, rifle, or shotgun in a car in Nevada. It is illegal. You can have a magazine in with ammo, but no ammo in the firing chamber. Okay. So anyway, out of the car, arm it. Get on. Try to find the rabbit. Hopefully you pre-adjusted the focus. You know, I, I usually do about 25 yards because that's about the average distance, but sometimes they're closer, sometimes they're farther. So you kind of sometimes got to fiddle with the focus and then you got to get the rabbit. And they're moving and they're running around. And you got that big heavy rifle and you're trying to follow a rabbit out there and the others with the spotlight are trying to hold a spotlight on it. It's difficult, it's, but it's fun. It is a blast. Now here's one little problem I was having, but I think it was more my fault than anything. Okay. So I'm doing this, and, and as I'm doing this, no problems. Scope works great. Record, stops recording, everything's wonderful. It's great. However, when I'm done doing my turn of shooting, of course I clear the rifle, and I turn my scope off. I power it. I'll power it down. No problem comes back around to my turn, my scope won't turn on. I'm like, damn. So every time I'm like, ah, pull the power, ah, shit, pull the power out, and I'm put it back in. I'm like, well, shit, this is pissing me off. Why the hell is that doing? Like the last time, last night, that was on my turn, I come to think of it, there's a power switch on that damn battery. As you can see, that off. Right there, the little button right there at the top. It's a power switch. Anyway, so I don't unplug it, but I do press the power switch. Scope starts up. So I guess the smart battery, being smarter than me, turns itself off when not in use no more. And you just got to hit the power switch to start it back up, which will then supply power to the scope. So 
like three hours last night of fighting with the damn USB cables when I just needed to hit the power switch. So, no problem there. Now, a couple other things. Last night in Nevada, we had full moon or nearly a full moon. Now, when you're spotlighting, spotlights are very powerful, so I'm not using the night mode and I'm not using the infrared. Um, so, it's, it's, it's just using the, the daytime part of the scope because of the spotlights. Um, while we were stopped reloading the magazines, I was standing out there and I said it was a full moon, close to a full moon. Skies were clearing up, some clouds had come in earlier today, but they were leaving us. So um, I turned it to night mode and I was astonished with it. Um, it was incredible. I mean, I could see the bushes, the sagebrush. If something was walking around out there, I would have been able to see it just under the moonlight. A number of years ago, I had an American Eagle second generation night vision with the actual intensifier tube. Um, I'm going to say this was at least as good as that. Um, it was just really incredible. I was just like, wow, this is so cool. Uh, in fact, the moon was so bright that even later when I did try the infrared, the infrared light gave me more light, but the moon was just so bright, it was incredible. I mean, I'm going to put some of the video. I did a little bit of the video. Um, and honestly, the video doesn't look like it's as clear as what I was seeing in a scope, which is kind of weird. But you can, you can make this stuff out easily. Um, and that's just strictly moonlight. Now, of course, if you have no moonlight, it ain't going to work that good. But it does work pretty good. Um, also, with this scope, uh, the night I was draining the battery, I had it walked around our parking lot out here in the apartment complex just using the regular street lights and stuff and it was phenomenal there and again this was daytime mode uh, the colored day mode not the night mode I was quite happy with that it picks up stuff I could see through the parking lot I could see the cars um, it was it was it was great um, so I am actually really happy with this scope I'm happy with the battery pack um, because changing batteries out every couple hours was not fun um, it is heavy but you know it's well built. This is all metal body. Um, I'm putting it on 22. I got it set up for one of my AR-15s too, and I got a couple bolt actions I'm going to hook it up to, and we'll get some video on that too. But all in all, this has been a great scope so far. I really have been enjoying it. Still got to get used. There, there's a lot of the command features I just haven't learned how to do yet. It's going to take some time. I said the. There is an instruction manual online I, found, I eventually found on the uh, ATN's homepage. But, um, yeah, it's kind of fun just poking around until you find stuff, too. So, anyway, for Desert Dwellers, um, I hope you keep watching our channel here and our videos. I'm doing a video now. I, yesterday, up at a place called Tunnel Camp, an old ghost town mining camp from probably the 20s or 30s, rough guess. Um, been there before but now I got a little bit of video of it we're going to do some more um, place called Potter Springs we spent uh, a couple hours there a lot of road rolls jackasses out there running around um, so until then enjoy your day and stay safe out there